Now that we've talked about the elements of short story, let's read one. This one is by Stephen Crane, written in 1898, and I want to tell you just a little bit about the author because it will be more enriching to you as you read. Um, Stephen Crane was born in the United States. He's a famous American author. Uh, had a pretty short life, though. He lived from 1871 to 1900. Uh, and he was born in Newark, New Jersey, uh, grew up there and uh, roundabout, picked up very early on an interest in the classics. Um, but his first love was writing. He spent time as a war correspondent and wrote in that, in that guise. He also wrote articles, poems, novels, short stories. He was a champion of the short story, and you'll see why as you read this one. Um, his writing is characterized by a lot of intensity and uh, of its realism. He is a realist writer and was uh, one of the early writers to promote that kind of a, a style where he observed life and wrote in, in real terms what he saw. Didn't become too involved in it, but just observed and wrote. Um, and, in, and because of that, he influenced the naturalism and the impressionism that later emerged, those forms of writing that later emerged in the United States and then abroad. Well, let's start looking at this story, then a great mistake. As you read the story, I want you to look at the elements that we've talked about of short story, setting, plot, characters, narrator, voice, and theme. You may wonder why we've broken down reading, broken down stories like this, but it's, it's kind of like taking a tour of Paris, say. You could fly over Paris, and that would be pretty interesting, wouldn't it? That's kind of like reading a story, okay? You, you get a, an idea of it, it's beautiful, good, I know what it's about, that was great. But if you were to walk the streets, you would get a much different view, a much more in-depth view, and a, a much different experience. You would experience Paris more, wouldn't you? And if you were to walk the streets more than once, and maybe with a guide that knows a little bit about the city, a little bit about the heritage, a little bit about the places to go, it would be a much more enriching experience. And that's how reading stories is. You can just read it, and that's great, and that's a good experience. But going back again is like landing on the ground and walking through it. Looking for these elements that we're talking about will help you appreciate it more, will help you understand it better, and will help you find the author's message. And all of that is a, a deeper experience. I think you'll like it. Remember we talked about setting? Let me give you just a little head start on setting as you read this story. You'll be finding things like, an Italian kept a fruit stand on a corner where he had good aim at the people who came down from the elevated station and at those who, were, who went along two thronged streets. There was a babe living hard by, up five flights of stairs. Already now we see uh, the place we're on a street corner, right? We have a fruit stand. There's an elevated station. There are two throng streets. We're starting to get a feel for where we are, setting-wise. There's an apartment building, apparently, f uh, up five flights of stairs. So now we're getting a little bit of feel for the setting. What about characters? Okay, we have an Italian. And we have a babe in that first paragraph, first two paragraphs. Already we get our, paragraph, our, our characters established, don't we? And where are we going with this? Why is the author making a setting, giving us characters? It's all about his message. So as you read this and find these elements, remember, we're looking for the theme. What about the narrator? Is the narrator a person in the story? Or does the narrator have a, a bird's eye view and can see all the characters, know their thoughts? Or does the narrator just know the thoughts of one character? That will help you know um, a little bit also about the author's message. Why is he looking at it from that viewpoint? And the plot, of course. The sequence of events, step by step by step, but Remember, what we're really looking for is the conflict. That's the thing that drives the theme. If there's no conflict, there's no story. There's nothing to write about. Every story has a conflict. And uh, finding that conflict will really help you to 
understand the story better, to appreciate it better, and also to find the author's message. All right, now read this story and look for these different elements as you read. Thank you. 